இந்தியாவோட நம்பர் ஒன் புரோக்கர் ஆன அலைஸ் ப்ளூல உங்க டிமேட் அண்ட் ட்ரேடிங் அக்கௌண்ட இன்னைக்கே ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணி மூவாயிரம் ரூபாய் மதிப்புள்ள வவுச்சரை ஃப்ரீயா பெறுங்க whatever is the deliberations and uh, the views ideas recommendations uh, and caution that we we place uh, before um, the, the decision makers we feel that it will be of use in in formulating the future policies now that uh, the uh, basically the issue today is that the mha ministry of home affairs has said april 20th there will be some relaxations subject to certain conditions and um, we have seen we have seen we have seen among our people that in, f- in fact mr raghavan as a police officer would certify would uh, bear me to this because as a journalist i have seen this i have watched this unless there is the danda unless there is enforcement unless there is punishment our people are not used to following rules the moment you relax something like almost like what happened in 2015 uh when you know the porur lake a small breach and it inundated the entire city so how do we kind of balance between this relaxation of essential services um msmes and to kind of spur the economy to some extent livelihood to some extent particularly the marginalized people now the balancing between life and livelihood what should the government do Mr. Sivaraman, if you were in the seat, what would you do? How far would you go? Actually, as I have already mentioned, and uh, it was uh, mentioned by Mr. Raghavan also, I had given the suggestion to slowly liberalize the movement of people, particularly in the area's case. And that's how it has happened. About 335 districts have been isolated where there has not been a single COVID case. Apart from this, many of the people who have been earning their daily bread by offering their services like electricians, plumbers, carpenters, they should be allowed to move because they are servicemen and their services are essential in the various households. That has also been done by the government. Now, as a follow-up of this, we do not know who is a plumber, who is an electrician. So, in future, to regulate this, each one of these people who provide domestic services should be licensed and should carry a proper identity card the government should have a means of registering them saying that this is an authorized person he is not a person with a criminal background or at least he is not in the police records so these are the people so this is one step forward coming to think of the future when you have to liberalize the movement of such people god forbid in any other epidemic or pandemic or any other emergency these people will have their licenses and they should be able to go and enter a house safely that they are authorized representatives this could be one of the very interesting follow mr sivaraman yes sir mr sivaraman sir i want to uh, interrupt here just with one uh, one doubt that i have mm. when you're talking of electricians yes they are very essential in fact in in my house too we need did one yesterday there was a calamity uh, or rather an emergency now you have seen uh, even uh, times of india carried a story today how the pizza boy a pizza boy in delhi he tested positive and all the houses he had visited are now uh, on in self quarantine so similarly these electricians and plumbers yes they will carry a government id i think uh, along with that suggestion because this is an essential service other we will really get locked up at home the government should along with the id should also make it mandatory that these people must be you know uh, screened once a week or something like that exactly exactly in case of such an emergency before they are allowed to move liberally in the society they should have with the certificate that they have been screened and proved to be without any infection otherwise in a pandemic situation it will be a dangerous thing to allow yes. these people to move simply because they have got an identity card therefore there has to be screen that's a precondition before they are allowed to move into the systems or uh, in the the society where they have to offer their services now as far as the msme sector is concerned i had already mentioned and the government of india immediately as he said i sent the suggestion that they must give be given a 3 month moratorium completely i also gave a suggestion that during this 3 month period no interest should be charged on the loan and that interest should be paid by the government as a grant i understand there is some kind of a subsidy but there should it should have been totally interest free interest falling due for this 3 month period 
when there was a lockdown, they could not have earned anything. I mean, in, in the future, if they earn anything, that will not be sufficient to pay the interest. And therefore, there should have been a complete uh, of stopping of the payment of interest and government of India should have subsidized it. That I don't think has happened. And I am sure that should happen. And in my view, that will give a very big okay. relief to the MSME sector to start uh, their industries as soon as the law court is open. So this is a very uh, important issue. One futuristic suggestion which I'm going to make. Now, India doesn't have a proper unemployment insurance scheme. So in my opinion, as a lesson from this, which I was contemplating to state in some other seminar, in any case, we are here, I'm stating that, that every organization which employs more than 10 people should be allowed to insure with somebody for an unemployment insurance scheme. Where there should be an equal contribution from the employer and the employee to some extent or probably even the government can also contribute if it is an MSME sector so that there is a fund which we can in economic theory we used to call it a wage fund it is out of the wage fund wages are being paid whereas here in an employment insurance if it is properly done and created there are any number of insurance agencies may come forward then in a time of this this kind of a situation it can be used and people need not starve they need not depend on government uh, funding to go to these people this is the second important suggestion which i want to make the third follow which i want to say is important that is political so far i'm not saying i'm making a political statement in the last six years or six and a half years this present government almost did kept aside the opposition leaders the opposition parties and the chief ministers also if you remember right if anyone of you have seen the volume containing prime minister jawaharlal nehru's letters to the chief ministers every month jawaharlal nehru used to write a letter to the chief minister my dear chief minister this has been happening on the international front this is in the domestic front at the government of india level whether you have anything to say on this matter this i got two volumes of those books with me now for the first time, Mr. Modi decided to consult the chief minister. It's a very good beginning. This should be carried on for once in at least once in six months. Mr. Modi should be in a position to consult the chief ministers on all important events in the country, on all important things which he want to get through the parliament. They should, he should take their opinion. This is a very good opening he has made. Similarly, in regard to the meeting with the opposition, probably are opening up a very good window tomorrow to solve some of our international disputes also. If, for instance, if you are going to negotiate with the Chinese on the international border, if you are going to have a matter of give and take, he could consult all the opposite leaders, take them into confidence and negotiate with the Chinese and settle that matter once for all. Similarly, there are many, many important legislation which can come into existence. And all those things, if he cares only to consult the opposition and the chief ministers, it would be smooth passage to the parliament. I don't know how much the opposition will cooperate, how much the chief minister, but nothing is lost if the prime minister starts this initiative, which he has started now and carries it on to the next four years of his tenure here. These are some of the important matters. And apart from that, I want to say something about medical side also. India has been criticized very strongly that we have been spending almost less than 1% of our GDP on government sponsored medical school. There was a Srinath Reddy Commission report on this, wherein he wanted to nationalize the entire health program, whereas it is not possible considering the present constitutional status where the health is a subject of the state governments. Even now, if you see, most of the work is being done from the state government, the central government is only assisting them. So, but this is in a hodgepodge way it is being done. Somebody is asking for some money, he is given some money. Somebody else is asking for something else, he is given something else. Therefore, the government of India should given the constraint of the constitution, have a formal national health planning to be done as to what is to happen, whether these things can be coordinated with the state governments properly, or whether the health can also become a concurrent subject. Today, health is a concurrent subject only as far as medical education is concerned. Whether health itself can come under this central, uh, central uh, government along with the state governments, I don't know, I can't say because one has to study it very carefully. But Looking to the fact, the rest of the world is spending almost 6% of the GDP on health. Some countries spend even 8%, 10% of the GDP. We have been spending less than 1%. So here is an opportunity for the government of India and for the state government to sit together how to hike up the expenditure on health up to 6% in the next 4 to 5 years and how to manage the national health grid. 
we have a health grid we have sub health centers we have primary health centers we have regional health centers we have district hospitals then we have got an, at the national level state level big hospitals and specialty hospitals we have a grid how to extend this grid how to improve it how to increase the number of beds how and these these things have to be carefully planned and in my view all the chief ministers and the health minister of government of india should sit down together and prepare a national health plan so that we are not caught like this in an emergency mr sivaraman uh, there is already criticism um, we have seen we have heard about it many times that we are spending huge amount of money on our defense whereas you know critical sectors like education and health do not get that much how do you look at it is it possible to no. to scale down the defense expenditure no it is impossible because even today india's expenditure on defense is hardly 1.8% of gdp the norm even internationally accepted norm is 3% of gdp we are just spending 1.8% of the gdp on our defense expenditure i don't think but there are several other areas where one can sit down and contemplate to cut down the expenditure wasteful expenditure is taking place in many right. areas take for example the mnr eg right. mnr eg is a thing which is touted upon by everybody now i have i am working in the villages of tamil nadu in many districts i am working every month i walk about 15 to 20 kilometers inside the villages i have seen in one place where mnr eg workers were there they were sitting and simply chatting when once they saw my car they started working digging some channel by and large in developed states i am not talking about uh under developed states like bihar or uttar pradesh or portions of maharashtra so the mnr eg scheme should be properly focused only into those areas and at times where there is a real need for mnr eg otherwise you are spending over a lack of crores on that without any purpose being achieved with your asset so these are some of the areas where government of india can sit down very carefully and try easily i think you should be able to galvanize 50000 crores to 60000 crores i have been a state finance secretary for several years 14 budgets i have prepared in the madhya pradesh state government i have been the central government for four years and i am in the imf for the several years seeing the budgets of all the countries it is not at all difficult for a country to find resources if anybody says i can't find resources i am not prepared to agree with that at all as a responsible person who has been in the finance ministry of government of india for several years i am saying this thank you mr sivaraman now uh, mr ganapati as the president of the south india chamber of commerce how do you respond to mr sivaraman's um, prescription is there some areas that need to be added how do you how do you react to that so i think uh, let's look at it in uh, multiple spectrums one is as uh, mr sivaraman said yes money has to be found and money is always there it's an uh, it's a willingness to find it on uh, the statement that he made that we need to uh, consult and collaborate i can't agree with him more number because some of the ideas uh, come from uh, unknown sources uh, as you, as we all know and recognize but purely from a business standpoint and perspective i think uh, a partial lockdown is a great start a partial lockdown is the way to go and i think that's where we need to do but also i think we need to detail out the opening efforts let me give you a concern for example multiple concerns that i have with this partial lockdown take the auto sector for example uh, chennai is the uh, detroit tamil nadu rather is the detroit of uh, india given that the all the auto majors are situated outside the city of chennai and i know of a large number of people who are component suppliers to these auto industries they are situated in chennai they are declared as uh, hot spots and they can't st start functioning now you know an automobile typically consists of something like about 19000 parts and these have to come and i think the auto manufacturer will be keen to finish those that are in the supply final line of uh, the assembly so that he can cater to the pent up demand that is likely to come up after a lockdown like this typical so i think you know if you take an auto uh, say, auto sector for example i think we'll have to detail out and find out who are those who are stuck in the hot spot but then give them some uh, inputs on how they can begin to work and then get themselves going i think you know the social distancing uh, thing has now become part of our national character 
maybe you know where it was between 10 i i i never be, uh, successfully stood in an airline queue or boarding an aircraft in this country without being pushed by somebody behind or somebody walking backwards or something mr shivaraman knows in the us there's a clear gap between uh, two guys in the queue now i think you know this all this is slowly changing in our country thanks to this uh, you know the with the kind of um, appeals that have been made by the leadership in this country the kind of uh, uh, you know showcasing that has been done i think this is a good way to begin and i think it's very easy if you have some messages going in from leaders uh, or personalities and uh, film personalities which is so important in a state like tamil nadu on the message of social distancing and i think you must get the msmes going msmes are the lifeline they do the heavy lifting for jobs and they collapse i think your job market collapses and once your job market collapses i think social unrest begins and we need to avoid that at all costs that should be in the front and center of any decision the second thing i said this in a particular context a few days ago the indian it sector needs to be treated with kid gloves they are the people who are doing the bulk of your revenues from outside they have a dominant role in uh, positioning in india so if you if you see 50% of the in it sector any case works from home so the other 50% going to office is happening delivery for all clients is happening no it company believe you me is suffering i mean uh, uh, in terms of client management but if you take the bpm sector which is employing the bulk of the people in this uh, in that sector that is where the volumes are being represent uh, working because they call for typically low skills uh, at their uh, thing and these are machine critical uh, delivery that is needed a guy has to sit in front of a machine a guy has to work on it and it'll be serving the client at the other end for example uh, you know if you take a, a client like jp i mean a, a company which is servicing jp morgan chase the guy sitting in omr is actually servicing a client of jp morgan chase sitting anywhere in the us or in the globe so it becomes important that he functions from where he is and in a highly competitive industry which bpm is if you don't deliver regardless of what is happening you have a problem where the client will decide that okay i don't want you i'll go to someone else there's as much vision to see as you take up so and it's very it's very comfortable to shift these things to you know something like uh, what do you call uh, oklahoma or wherever and then uh, take the uh, business forward so i think we need to deal with uh, uh, you know uh, the bpms a little better government has to ensure bpms function fully you have to organize uh, transport you have to give them security many of them work uh, across various time zones in the globe so you have to provide security for them to go home come to work etc i think you know you have to, if, if a government is business focused as the state governments must be this is the job of a state government you know to understand and translate it into actual delivery for the companies this has to be done and uh, I, i mean uh, because i used to see a huge arise uh, see the, uh, every challenge has an opportunity in these challenging times a sector that will take off quite well for india will be the it sector because Uh, we were discussing earlier with mr shivaram and 6 trillion is being pumped into the uh, economy of the us i see a lot of it going to uh, the pharma sector the health sciences and life uh, science, health care and life sciences sector is going to benefit uh, hugely and this is where you know indian it companies are going to benefit in terms of actual contracts so i think you know we need to focus on uh, doing this two sectors government must focus immediately auto sector because that is where the manufacturing provides the maximum jobs the it sector which provides for a huge amount of jobs and the third is agriculture agriculture you must ensure that farm to fork everything is taken care of people must reach farms sow seeds or wheat it must come to through the supply chain cold storage warehousing logistics everything till it reaches the mandi and then to beyond that to the local kirana for sale i think you know you this is a huge thing that we need to think through and there is nothing like a partial lifting in the agriculture sector you produce if it doesn't move you are in trouble likewise in the it sector if your it companies work the ites and bpm doesn't work it doesn't solve the problem if the uh, hyundai factory works but its component supplier who is in uh, ambattur or uh, you know wherever he doesn't feed you are in trouble so i think you know you need to uh, this is the job of a state government 
to interpret it means what it includes ites bpm auto sector means what it includes the manufacturing of the components also i think this is a whole chain of thing and that is a responsibility of the state government to interpret and get it done now uh, mr sundar raman uh, the very well known chartered accountant and uh, chennai citizens forum uh, we the, the, the his forum had conducted uh, a survey a survey among uh, uh, knowledgeable citizens uh, mr sundar raman are you, uh, can can you can you detail us what is the findings of the survey generally yeah if we, uh, i will just take you through the responses which was initially received because the survey was hosted uh, today morning uh there, there was a response received from some 500 uh, business community people so the first question was we, we wanted to know the initial quick response uh, from them uh, are they okay with uh, the relaxation of the lockdown so on uh, 67.6% of the people uh, they say that yeah it can be relaxed by following the guidelines so that is a good thing to know and uh, the second question which we have placed is uh, it is suggested that the manufacturing unit should work with reduced workforce to maintain social or uh, physical distancing uh, in your opinion what should be the basis to decide such reduced workforce was another question because uh, there are uh, there are concerns where we have we have come across where 500 people work in a, a very close environment so in that case uh, the mha guideline saying that uh, 20% of the total workforce Uh, may be allowed to work or 30 percent of the total workforce allowed to work may not be still be a viable option so maybe the uh, the distancing or working area per employee should be the basis for uh, uh, the implementation of the guidelines so um, as rightly uh, we found out that 52.2 percent of the people say that the working area per employee should be the basis for implementation of the guideline and percentage on the base of the percentage of number of employees 30.8 percentage of the people Uh, they have said it should be on that basis and many others have different ideas altogether and they have given that as a general remark at this point i would like to ask mr raghavan is it possible for the government and the law enforcing agencies to enforce to implement this sectarian this selected this uh, you know certain certain parts allowed to function certain parts not allowed to function is it possible sir yeah first of all thank you very much for uh, asking me to join this uh, absorbing discussion uh, yes all of us have been deeply involved in how the government we are watching the government perform in these difficult times first i must pay my pay my compliment to the government and to the police in particular i never thought the police would rise to the occasion so well as they have done of course there have been instances of some excesses here and there But the sheer magnitude of the operations in Raffles, I don't know whether I would have done half as well as the police are doing now. And uh, their 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 job has become very skilled one. Unlike that, yes, they have been occasionally using some force here and there to enforce um, uh, the guidelines. Uh, but they are not. They I think it's a great um, learning uh, process for the police for the future. Well, it's not as if just uh, they handle the situation now, and once the coronavirus sector uh, is over, they can relax because this is a good learning for the future, and they they have to be trained. First of all, I always I had always believed that the police force is too large for us to manage. We have to eat an humble pie. I think we need more and more policemen because they are not going to perform conventional chores. They are going to handle situations like the coronavirus. But I'm told by certain authorities that uh, such uh, pandemic could become the order of the day in the future. So, how is the police going to prepare themselves? So, this is a big question which um, arises, and all of us will have to give some thought, especially police leadership. Now, as for your question, that how are they going to ensure this sectorization of relaxation? It's again a very difficult task. It's, it requires a lot of skill and patience. This is where police leadership uh, comes in. Fortunately, we have some excellent leaders. I can speak for the DGP in Tamil Nadu and for the Commissioner of Police and the, those officers in the district. They have they have they have in, immersed themselves heart and soul into the process, and uh, 
whether the, the basic task is to ensure that your instructions, your guidelines percolate down to the last person. Because even after issuing guidelines, you relax, trucks are to be allowed, electricians are to be allowed and all that. Ultimately, you're not very sure whether this goes down to the level of the constable. So communication is going to become very, uh, very vital and the police will have to rethink how they're going to communicate. Fortunately, uh, the police force has become, even at the lowest level, become technologically savvy. Everybody uses a cell phone, everybody understands what's WhatsApp and probably now Zoom also, uh, they understand. Whether now they have to, uh, police force, police forces will have to bring a certain objectivity and to ensuring that this what happens. Of course, they look up to their superiors for guidance, whether the all of the it's a question of proportions. It's a question of proportions, it's a question of skill, and a question of availability of manpower, and how you're going to look after the police force. I mean, there's a limit up to which the police can work. They, 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 they could just buckle down under sheer pressure, like, like many health workers. You, ever, you see instances all over the world of nursing staff just cracking down. Some of them have lost their lives because there's a limit up to which nurses have done excellent work. But at a point in time, they will themselves give up because the sheer pressure, the sheer volume of work and the hazards they face. Same thing will probably extend to police. Now, especially in the handling of this migrant, migrant labor. We have seen it vividly in our TV. How, what a difficult task it was. Using me, of course, is not going to help. They're, they're like a human being. They keep coming. And they, I, so, yeah, this is going to be difficult. Police are going to be found fault with but not enforcing this containment zones as efficiently as uh, the government would like them to. So, I think it's a very difficult, dicey situation. I don't guarantee that this will work all that well, but still, we'll make a lot depends on leadership and maintaining the morale of police force because. We are not giving them, uh, like, like the health for health service. Nurses and doctors are working. Many of them have lost their lives all over the world. Same thing could happen to the police. How are you going to sustain their morale? This is going to be a key question. In fact, uh, that they are supposed to be working more than eight hours a day. And uh, recently, uh, the DGP issued a, a circular to his force to be very uh, you know, careful on how they deal with the public, to be humane not to be harsh on them, that, that statement was taken very well by the people. In fact, that was reflected in the media too. But there are, there's also a segment called home guards. I'm told that uh, uh, state of affairs there, they're not being paid, that they, they are made to work for 20 days, 30 days, they're paid for three days, four days, and very harshly treated. Uh, not even uh, a mask is given to them. Home guards is a, a very important component in a situation like this. Don't you think so, Mr. Raghavan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In my times, of course, that was service 20 years ago. The home guards were an important constituent um, of the law and order missionary. They're doing fairly well. But then things have changed so much in the past 15, 20 years that home guards will not be equal to the, to the rigors of modern law enforcement. At a point of time when numbers are smaller and the citizenry was much more cooperative, more responsive, I, now, now the dimensions are so mind-boggling, especially this experience we got the virus, coronavirus. So I don't think the, the home guards will be equal to the task of, of blending experience, uh, patience, and uh, a certain kind of rigor. So I, th I think I will personally, I may be talking through my hat, I will keep the home guards out. They may, they may be able to some assistance. To count on them to assist the police is a pipe dream. But should the police be given some extra protective gear? Yeah. Apart from uh, just a mask? Definitely they need extra. Even earlier, even before the coronavirus, we, there, there, was a, there was a school of thought that the, the traffic constable, for instance, was being exposed to too much of noxious paper and they needed very effective uh, face gear. This was can recognize, partially considered, but many of the traffic policemen are still operating without the, this mask. So, 
Now the time has come to assess the rigors of police work. What exactly ignore, uh, equipment we, we should give as a matter of routine, not as a matter of grace, a matter of routine. How, what exactly we should give them to handle such situations? Let us, meant by, I may be pessimistic. I heard some experts say that there is no cutoff date for why the virus to disappear. It'll keep yes. on, it'll keep on coming. So yes. it's not thing that we have done. Uh, if we go back to we completely lift the lockdown, then we yes. have absolutely should not give us a false sense of uh, uh, comfort. Yes. The police will have to do a lot of thinking. There has to be a blueprint, a, a, an implementable blueprint, a practical blueprint, which will provide for all contingencies which the police force. Uh, police will face in the future. There are some excellent bright leaders. Uh, there should be a think tank for this. The current officers, I don't want uh, people who are out, out of contact, because people who have retired several years. People who are currently in the force, they have faced the fury of coronavirus and the public response to it, the kind of the kind of uh, skill we had to bring to contain it. So we need a plan of action. We can't just muddle. I think just now there's a lot of muddling along. In spite of it, the police gave a good account of themselves. But if Absolutely. A, a, a Absolutely. good plan, yes. I think we'll the police will have to do it. Yes, yes. So um, it it means yes. a lot of money. A lot of money will have to be more money. To spend to the police, we can't pin it. Pin. Yes, you are you're talking of a plan of action and that needs yes. a lot of money for implementing. Sivaram, Mr. Sivaraman, uh, how do you how will you find a lot of money and how will you have a kind of a think tank? How do you formulate that? Uh, before I come to the money, I want to make a few points. Number one, what is the order that the government of India has passed under the National Disaster Management Act? We have to get it only from the Google. Not a single publication has made a public public the order that has been passed for the lockdown. Mr. Raghavan knows very well as a police commissioner, and I know very well as I have used a 144 section that we publicize the order. When we impose 144, can be used on several uh, several things. Normally, it is used for preventing from people assembling for more than more than four people we yeah. publicize it we we inform through megaphones in every street where we are going to impose a section 144 now take for example chennai where is the order i buy four newspapers the newspapers have not published the order of the commissioner of police of uh, chennai i have written to the commissioner of police vishnath and i know him very well where is your order where is the government of tamil nadu order people do not know what is the content of the order itself so this has not been given publicity in any newspaper of India. First, there has been a failure on that front. Therefore, if anybody is arrested, in the suppose somebody is wandering around and the policeman takes it, he will say, I don't know the order. Where is the order? I have not seen the order. There is, it's only through word of mouth or through the media that people know that there is a lockdown. I have not seen a single proclamation. Don't you think on. that there is enough of publicity on that? No, that is not sufficient because for, for instance, Suppose you go to a court of law, then you have to dig it out of the Google and say, yes, here is the law. Mr. Raghavan knows very well. He has been commissioner of police. When we pass an order, we make an announcement. We publish in the paper. I hear so-and-so, so-and-so, here by orders under section 140, given the powers vested in me. You know, that, anyhow, that's a besides the point. Now, as far as the police is concerned, because I have, I have also been uh, uh, closely working with the police during my district days and other periods also, when I was uh, revenue secretary. The point is, how much can you put on the police? Can you ask them to supervise whether the order of opening up the industries have been done properly or no? No, they can't do it. There are certain areas where the police just cannot discharge those responsibilities. It has to be given to the head of the organization himself. If it is Mr. Bhargav as chairman of Maruti, or if it is somebody else as chairman, Anand Mahindra as chairman of Mahindra, then it must be his responsibility to ensure that he carries out the government orders properly, not the police. The police have given certain responsibilities to bring about public order in, in the public. They cannot be responsible for imposing these orders or enforcing these orders. So there must be a clear cut divided responsibility 
of the different authorities. The district magistrate has got certain authorities. Now, for instance, district magistrate can certainly take to task any industry which violates the order. But the police cannot go and do this. The police have got umpteen other duties. Therefore, one thing which has to be made very clear is now it is a jumble. Although there are clear cut responsibilities laid down, people should know what is their responsibility and which area they are responsible for. And as Mr. Raghavan rightly pointed out, a human being cannot work for more than 10 hours and continuously, certainly for 10, for seven days, eight days, he just cannot work. The number of policemen have to be increased. They have to be trained. If you are using home guards, they have to be paid. Home guards have to be paid when they are on duty. There is an allowance prescribed by the government. They are given free food also. They are given uniform. They are given also basic training. Unless this is done, how can you use the uh, home guards? So these are all things which the government will have to think very, very carefully. So you ask me about where to find the resources. Now, if somebody wants to find the resources, he can go through the entire budget and easily find out the resources. It is not at all difficult to find resources. There are umpteen areas where you can cut out expenditure. People can be asked to curtail expenditure. People, officers spend money lavishly on their cars. Now, take for example, one state government, I don't want to name the state government, where secretaries to government and deputy secretaries to government travel in cars, which I, as secretary, or Mr. Raghavan, as commissioner of police, would have never dreamt of even getting into it. There are people who are using those cars. People are spending 25 lakhs and 30 lakhs in buying cars for high court judges and chief secretary. There are many such areas where you can control expenditure. In fact, when I joined as finance secretary in Madhya Pradesh, the task before me was how to save the state from bankruptcy. The state was bankrupt. And I found within one month, I was able to make the state have a surplus of money by simply reordering the expenditure and simply containing wasteful expenditure. There are many, many areas where government money must be due. People are not simply paying the dues. So those dues can be collected. If somebody can sit down and work it out, very easily it can be done. It's not that it cannot be done. Government of India itself will be able to find out 50,000 crores at least in their budget, which can be saved for using for some Mr. of these. Sivraman, Mr. Sivraman, yeah. I'm, I'm sure and I hope that this government, particularly our state government, will use the expertise and ideas of people like you and, and get an expert panel together. And before I move to Mr. K.T. Raghavan, the senior standing counsel, on a very important issue of that, that, have been, that, that has been raised, raised by people like you also, Mr. Sivaraman, on uh, the enforcement and on, uh, you know, even, even the 144, if I'm arrested, uh, where is the order? I mean, how does a magistrate look at it? In fact, magistrates are not working now. And uh, KT Raghavan perhaps will contemplate on this, that the lower courts, not just the lower courts, even the high court, the, ju the judiciary is not working. So does it create a problem? for the common man, particularly when rules are not specified, when proclamations are not notified, only there is one fear of death from corona that is ruling at the moment to discipline the people. Now, before I go to KT Raghavan, I would like to talk to Dr. Suresh, the senior microbiologist, because I pulled him out of an OP to be on the panel. I do not want to delay his work. and. Uh, uh, you know, inconvenience his patients. Dr. Suresh, um, what do you think of the situation now? Every day they are saying new cases, deaths, and how do you look at this as a microbiologist? Yes, sir. Sir, as uh, Mr. Sivaraman said, he said about uh, regarding the screening, there is no validated screening test for COVID-19. So, as you have said, before starting the industries, all the employees should be get the fitness and from the Department of Public Health that they don't have any contact with the COVID patients and they are not staying in the hot zone areas. So before permitting them to work, they should get a certificate from the Department of Public Health in coordination with the local police. So that will help you to prevent the spread further. And another thing I want to bring you to the notice is we all speak of only the eradications. We also should think of the emergence of the infection. Those who are getting recovered, they can even shed the viruses for another four to five weeks through fecus. So those recovered patients should also be home quarantined for another four to five weeks to prevent the re-emergence of infection. How, how long quarantine? Four to five weeks. 
Yeah, four to five weeks. Because fifty percent of the COVID patients, those who recover from the respiratory symptoms, may shed coronavirus in the fecus for another four to five weeks. So they should also be home quarantined even after the recovery for another four weeks. And okay. one more thing, and uh, one more thing I want to bring it to notice is we should also screen all the healthcare providers. Because so far there is no proper guidelines to screen the healthcare providers. They are all about exposed, so they should also be screened. They all should be screened before getting back into work. So all these three will prevent the re-emergence of infections and further spread. Even even when we talk about the virus and a vaccine, I'm told that that to develop a vaccine it will take at least one and a half to two years. So that is to be considered because in the industries definitely they all should be screened as Mr. Subraman said before permitting permitting them to work because if we do have the validated tests they should have at least the medical certificate clearance from the Department of Public Health because only they have the list of contacts list of the person uh, infected everything travel history everything so in coordination with the police everybody those who are permitted to work should have the clearance certificate. Fitness certificate, I mean. Do you agree that there should be more of screening to be done? So as I've already told you, there is no screening test particularly. There is no validated test for screening. In the airport, they were screening only for temperature. That's why we have missed a lot of cases. So that some, if in some cases there may be a temperature, in some cases they may not have temperature also. Does it mean that we are in a very hopeless situation and best is to stay at home? No, see, in another three weeks, we'll come to know whether that, okay, there is a decreasing trend or not. Definitely, there will be a decreasing trend because we see only the cases of contacts. There is no new emergence cases. And as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, the community spread is very, very meager, even below 3%. Only either the travel history or the conference or Nizamuddin conference only, these are all correlated with that. So nearly 95% of the cases have arisen from that. So community right. spread is still All before right. starting the big scale industries and this thing, we should have a screening, we should get the fitness certificate before permitting them to work and still we should maintain the social distancing, Should social distance should be maintained and as for schools and malls and this thing, this should be delayed till June 15th, another six weeks before permit, permitting them to work. So, as Dr. Suresh says, even the relaxation of the critical areas like MSMEs or whatever, IT, anything, anything should be done in a very careful manner. Otherwise, this new cases, there will be a spike. Uh, Mr. Raghavan, how do you look at the situation from a lawyer's perspective? And also, you are a public person. You are also the leader of a, of a major political party that is, the ruling, uh, that is ruling India now. You are a BJP leader as well. How do you look at it from a public perception, from a public man, as well as uh, a leader, a, a leading uh, uh, standing council? So what I feel is already uh, government of India and state governments, they identify these hotspots. All the hotspots are uh, in fact cordoned off right now. Nobody will be allowed to come out uh, from these identified uh, hotspots. So, and uh, as uh, Dr. rightly said, uh, it has not spread, the community spread has not happened. The managers or leadership or industry to take care of, uh, to follow those uh, guidelines. Uh, and uh, according to government, uh, around uh, 350 districts that, uh, is not uh, affected with uh, this uh, corona, uh, COVID-19. So majority of uh, uh, districts are safe uh, in India right now. So I think, uh, uh, but uh, see, Mr. Sivaraman uh, has said uh, the 144 uh, orders were not uh, published uh, in a newspaper or uh, government has not uh, come out with uh, full details. I, I think the, uh, the communication, uh, no, uh, a lot of changes in communication system. Now, uh, government issues an order. Uh, I received it in my WhatsApp within five minutes. Everyone knows that. So uh, the traditional method need not be followed. You have uh, yeah, earlier uh, we, have, we had only one Doordarshan. Now we have many channels. Channels are coming out with these uh, details, and uh, we have Twitter handles, uh, for social media uh, handles are there. Uh, they came out with this uh, uh, 
government's order. So I think uh, that need not be, uh, we cannot uh, raise a, uh, a big question on that. And uh, as far as uh, uh, this lifting, partial lifting, I think the government has consulted many people. In, uh, all experts were consulted. In fact, we too had uh, some, uh, this type of uh, Zoom meeting earlier and we uh, presented uh, our uh, views to the government. So after considering uh, every, uh, every uh, I, I think consulting everyone and considering all the facts, government has come out uh, with this uh, partial lockdown. But of course, it's, it's, it's uh, difficult uh, to, uh, to enforce. The, law, the uh, police force will find it difficult. Uh, but uh, everyone, uh, we need to take uh, precautions. Uh, with, uh, when, uh, we do not wait for government's order, anything for police order. We on our own take uh, precautions. But uh, government has no option also because uh, 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 we have a lot of uh, this uh, unorganized uh, workers. So they started, in fact, a couple of days ago, we have seen in uh, Bombay also, started their agitation. So we need to consider everything. And I hope uh, the orders of our guidelines of the government will be strictly adhered to by uh, the uh, stakeholders. And what about uh, the justice delivery system? Justice delivery sir, already from uh, May 1st to 31st, all the courts are, will be on holiday. Already several lakhs cases are pending. In fact, I argued a case, uh, two cases uh, a year ago, but uh, still a judgment uh, not uh, delivered. What to do? Yes. Already we have such cases. Nothing will happen. Good, which means some now like the, it that way. Yeah. The common man, huh? common some man. like it that way. I said, yes. <laughs> so, um, um, now, um, from what Dr. Suresh said, it seem, we seem to be in a very hopeless situation where there is no proper testing available. And um, now we are going to relax the, 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 the lockdown. And yes, sir, uh, you wanted to say something, sir. May I come in now? Mr. Ganapati, yeah, you, yeah. you, you have a point. Yeah, see, uh, coming back to what I'm familiar with, uh, you know, uh, businesses run for profits, not for charity. But then businesses today in a flat world are uh, linked uh, to the, uh, in, a, in a globally interconnected world, businesses also depend on what is happening around. If you really look at it, America got into it from a historical high. I think uh, there's no argument on that. Uh, the, uh, India got into it from a very difficult uh, standpoint. Our economy was under stress uh, when we got into this. But the one uh, factor, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Shivraman can uh, add uh, value to what I'm saying, we don't know when China got into it. We don't know when China got out of it. But I think you know it's fair to presume that uh, the world order is undergoing some challenge and transformation. America may will may still come out as G1, but uh, we don't know how far behind or how far close China is going to be to that. And I think linked to that and the uh, apparent uh, uh, stress in Europe. In fact, one European uh, client of mine told me that uh, either coronavirus will kill Europe or Europe will kill uh, coronavirus. You know, it is so bad. So we don't know uh, the quality of uh, recovery from uh, Europe. I think the, if the world order changes because of all these things, uh, I think India can come under stress. But again, India can have view this as an opportunity and try and get into the global supply chain a whole lot better. To me, I think the slogan for India in the coming days, uh, if not coming years, should be assemble in India. I think that is our strength. Services has always been our forte. Services has always been our strength. Uh, more than uh, anything else, I think assemble in India will uh, catapult us to the uh, next uh, tranche of uh, growth and make India a very dominant uh, economic power, coupled as we are with the uh, front and center position, full position that we have in the IT services, 
I think if we can get into that layer of um, assemble in India, I think India's fortunes can change arising out of this challenge. That's why I've always felt that both internally and externally, challenge is an opportunity. Thank you. Very, uh, very well said, Mr. Ganapati. Uh, before I ask Mr. Sivaraman to add to that, I have a word of caution as a, as a journalist. We turn east and we have seen China bring back normalcy business and uh, jobs and all that six months after the first Corona case came out, November, December, November. Six months, they were shut down, almost shut down. And then you turn west, you see America collapsing. There are questions being raised whether America will continue to be the number one, the, the superpower, whether it will be the leader of world economy, whether the dollar will be really where it is today. So between the two, we have pointers to take. Yes, you are a businessman, but you should also talk about the, the fatalities. It's the hopelessness. It's not like I have a fever and I can be treated. Right now, the people who have said they have been treated, they have been cured. In fact, Dr. Suresh has been saying they can get it back and get it back more virulently. So you need to be really, really careful on handling the relaxation. We don't know what herd immunity conditions. is actually. We yes. still don't know what herd immunity is, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Mr. Sivaraman, any, any thoughts on that? What uh, Mr. Ganapati talked about, the world order and the Indian opportunities there. Before I come to the world order, I want to bring to your notice as well as to the notice of Mr. Raghavan. There is a National Migrant Labor Employment Act 1979 passed by the Indian Parliament under which any organization employing more than five persons who are migrant workers must register themselves with the state government, migrant labor authority, whomsoever is designated and must get a license. So I am simply wonderstruck as to why this mess was created of migrant labor. Because if you look at the site of the government of Tamil Nadu, there is a designated officer for registering the migrant workers as well as giving them licenses. If you look at the site of the Kerala government, they have also passed an order by which migrant workers are insured. They are given health facilities, health insurance, employment insurance, everything is there. What happened to all these things? I have not seen a single news item focusing on this point, excepting in one newspaper, one trade union raised this point. What happened to the National Migrant Workers Employment Act of 1979? Why the state governments are now in, uh, not uh, uh, implemented it properly? There is a chief commissioner of labor in government of India and the labor ministry. In this digital age, he would have had at his fingertips how many states have got migrant workers, how many migrant workers, from which states, from where they belong to, how they should have been organized, etc. Why this factor was completely ignored. I am not able to understand it. This is something which passes my comprehension because the Government of India Chief Labor Commissioner is a very senior officer. And the state government also appointed jam, joint commissioners of labor to register the migrant workers to get all details from the, of the migrant workers. So every state government should be having the list of migrant workers, where they are located, which companies are working on them. Therefore, this problem which is created, this mess could have been easily avoided. Now that's, of course, that's one point. Now regarding the world order, I am not so optimistic as Mr. Ganapati regarding the world order that is going to emerge. The world order that is going to emerge is not going to be as globalized as it is now or as it was before the pandemic. Because people have seen now, China has been put, trying to put itself in a position of dominance as far as the supply of medicines are concerned, supply of equipment are concerned. This is not going to happen anymore. People have started already working. Take our own country. Government of India set up a committee of pharma pharmaceutical uh, companies as well as the Government of India ministries. And now they have decided to give 10,000 crore subsidy for setting up the API units in India. They said every state government will be given 1,000 crore subsidy if they are able to find a park where these APAs can be set up. That is the basic chemicals for the pharmaceutical company. They are working very hard on it. Therefore, there is not going to be the kind of supply chain which we have been accustomed to in the last 10 years when China became the dominant factor as far as supply is concerned. So every country is going to find out, examine what are the important things which they have to make within their own country so that they don't become dependent on others. 
take for example ventilators now ventilators mahindra is making maruti is making everyone has started making it therefore it's not going to be that after this period is over every country will try to become self sustaining as far as important drugs as far as important equ medical equipment are concerned because they would not like to depend on somebody else because they may jack up the prices they may supply poor quality equipment come very uh, responsible for answering this second point so far we have been thinking of capitalism freedom of enterprise promotion of private sector etc every time a crisis took place it is the government which stepped in to prevent the crisis from happening helping the private sector so the role of the government whether it is a democracy or a capitalistic society extreme democracy like in the united states government is going to play a more and more dominant role in the coming uh, years because without that economists will not be able to sustain themselves properly private sector will be allowed to function Uh, properly but government will certainly be in the picture because now the government is in the picture private sector has not been able to do anything about the pandemic excepting trying to do research and supply equipment even that we have not been able to supply adequately as far as our own state is concerned so this supply chain which has been a dominant feature of the interdependent world is going to be broken in the coming years and the world order is going to change politically also the world order will be changing because now you see that the european countries will also be looking into what has happened within the system they have lost thousands of people their entire economy shattered italy is not going to rise it is going to become a third world country france may become a third world country spain may become a third world country they are going to look at themselves what has happened to us why have we become like this so the the world and i don't think china is going to be anywhere in the picture today you have seen the newspaper the whether it is true or false united states has announced china has exploded a nuclear device underground with zero emission and they are questioning china why did you do it you are a member of the ctpt why have you done it these are all precursors as to what is going to happen in the coming months after this corona virus uh, impact is gone we are going to see a complete change in the world order of things i well it looks like uh, at the end of the session or i think it, we have come to the end of the session unless some any panelists has additional points to make it looks like a very dismal situation and a lot of caution is required is needed to be made is we need required from the government and lot of responsibility from the citizen if he should see his next generation come up before his eyes thank you very much all the panelists and have safe days life ahead of you all thank you very much thank you mr babu